On today's Locked on Jayhawks, previewing KU's game against Wichita State at the T-Mobile Center, their final non-con game and final game of the calendar year of 2023. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available anywhere that you get your podcasts, including on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. On today's edition of the show, we're previewing Kansas versus Wichita State, first meeting since the 2015 NCAA tournament. And we'll get into our top storylines, Wichita State scouting report, matchups of the game, and players to watch on this episode of the show. First, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So KU takes on Wichita State Saturday at three o'clock. Pre-game will start at uh, one thirty on one five nine Kiss in Lawrence, and we'll be joined once the KU women's game ends on KLWN. Uh, it's the first meeting since 2015 in the NCAA tournament. That did not go so well for KU. Wichita State won that one with Fred Van Vliet, Ron Baker, and the boys 78 to 65. And uh, that was just one of those. That was one of those Kansas teams that got a two seed, but it was like, ah, realistically, they're probably closer to a three or four seed. But because they play a tough schedule and Bill Self willed them to a two seed, whereas that Wichita State team felt more like a three, four, five seed, but they didn't have the schedule, so you ended up with that that tough clash and. Uh, that did not go well for KU, but that was that group of young, you know, sophomores or like freshman Devontae Graham that uh, ended up coming through the next couple of years for you. But Kansas does lead the all-time series here despite that loss, 12-3. to So they've been pretty dominant overall in the series. You have to go all the way back, though, to 1993 for the most recent meeting before the 2015 one, uh, in the, which Kansas – Won pretty hastily, I would say. 103-54 to 54 was the final score of a game in Lawrence. Uh, that was played in January of 93 to give them what eventually was five straight, uh, snapped by the most recent loss in the series. Uh, as far as some of the big storylines in this game, I think number one is coming off Christmas break for both these teams. Uh, both these teams get maybe extra rested legs, which I think is even more impactful for KU because they have a thinner bench and the starters are playing such a huge load of minutes. Coming off the Christmas break, resetting minds, right? Getting your mind right, feeling, I don't know, ready to roll once again and, and physically getting re-ready for this, I, I think is a big deal. And a lot of times Christmas break can really be the big opportunity for a team to improve and uh, for things to start to turn a corner, so to speak, especially for young players. Uh, speaking of a young player, Johnny Furphy, he is back. He missed the last game after he was back home for a prior family obligation. He's back in tow. How does he impact the rotation after Nick Timberlake had a big game? Do we see Timberlake off the bench before Furphy? Do we see Furphy still uh, ahead of Nick Timberlake there when they're both playing? How does that all work out? Does he have the same amount of minutes? Is it less? Uh, you know, Kevin him back. And, and I think further to that is can Nick Timberlake continue to build off his last performance? 29 minutes played, 13 points scored. He hits three three-pointers. Are we going to see him continue to play a bigger role? I don't imagine it'll be 29 minutes because now the Furphy's back. That's 14 minutes per game that he was averaging. But does Timberlake still give you 15 minutes? Does he give you 20 minutes per game? And what does he look like? Does the carried over strong performance come past the second half of Christmas break where he has more confidence now and he's hitting shots? Or now that you do have Furphy back and maybe the, the rotation leash, so to speak, how long you're going to be out there, how many mistakes you're going to be allowed to play is a little bit shorter with another guy to go to in Furphy. Does it revert back to the mean? This will be a big game for Nick Timberlake. Uh, it's also KU dealing with the random December, November T-Mobile slash Sprint Center past blahness, right? But it's not as bad as you might think. Okay, so obviously KU's had some good moments, winning Big 12 tournaments, winning NCAA tournament games. They've had some bad moments, losing a game to like Oregon and some of these games in the December, November non-con in the T-Mobile slash Sprint Center. And it's felt like to me like a lot of, it's almost like a an idea where you expect when KU goes to the, the T-Mobile Sprint Center at, in the past, that you were expecting it to be kind of an ugly performance by KU standards. 
And I went back and actually looked at all that. And I don't know that there's much data to, to back it up. I think it's more about you just think more about the tragedies that have happened, the tragic moments, the losses that have happened. Because you go back, okay, so they won 78-52 to 52 against UTEP in 2021, covered the spread. 2019, uh, they won 98-57 over UMKC, covered the spread. Now, they did only win by three against New Mexico State in 2018, and they lost by nine to Washington in 2017. Then 2016, they beat UAB 83-63. That was that, like, CBE Classic. Uh, they lost or they beat Georgia, but didn't cover the spread 65, 54. And then they beat Davidson 89, 71, 2015. They beat Oregon state and covered the spread 2013. They beat New Mexico and covered the spread 2012. They beat Washington state and St. Louis and covered the spread uh, 2009. They beat LaSalle and covered the spread 2008. They beat Washington and covered the spread. And I'm skipping some of the ones that they didn't cover the spread or they lost and everything, but I, I just want to total it up for you here. Kansas in I I didn't want to include these as the same games as the Big 12 tournament and as the NCAA tournament games that have happened in the T-Mobile Center because those are different. It's different competition. It's a much different time of year when you're playing those. It's in March. It's the finale for your team, right? It's the final product of your team. I mean, when you're playing these games, it's early in the season. You're still figuring things out. So I only wanted to look at the November and December games in T-Mobile. Total it all up. Bill Self in November and December games at T-Mobile Center slash Sprint Center at the time is 20 and four. So he's done a good job there. And when you look at against the spread, which is maybe a better measure to be like, okay, but are they 20 and four, but they're, you know, five and 19 against the spread where they're not performing to expectation. I was only able to go back uh, against the spread through 2006. So I wasn't able to find the spread for 05 when they beat Cal by 13, 04 when they beat Milwaukee by 11 uh, or 03 when they beat Oregon by 10. But of the last 21 games that they played at the T-Mobile or Sprint Center, they were 11 and 10 against the spread. And they're 8 and 5 over their last 13. So actually, KU has not been as bad as you might think in some of these games. Now, obviously, if I did add the Big 12 tournament, NCAA tournament, I don't know if that would help or hurt the cause because uh, Big 12 tournament, they've won so many of them. They've won so many more than everyone else. But also the winning percentage in the Big 12 tournament is lower than like um, maybe you're averaging on the season. And, and obviously you think more of the Oregon loss than you do of like the Purdue win in the NCAA tournament. So uh, kind of interesting how that's all approached. But as far as the Wichita State scouting report, they are eight and four on the season. They are ranked just inside the top 120 on Ken Palm, top 100 on defense, outside the top 150 on offense. So they've been a better defensive team than offensively. Uh, they've lost to the Liberty by 17. That's a really good Liberty team. Missouri by 10, South Dakota State by 10. And Kansas State by nine, that was at a game, their last game before the Christmas break at the T-Mobile Center. So they're used to, I guess, playing here most recently. Uh, their best wins are over Richmond, who is a top 100-ish team by 12. Southern Illinois, another top 100-ish team by one. They're in year one of the Paul Mills era, who came in from Oral Roberts, where he had a lot of success there with Max Asmus. And, uh, you know, made the postseason this past year. A couple of years before, they make it to the uh, Sweet 16. As far as what they do well. They don't turn it over a ton. They're really solid rebounding on both sides of the glass. They defend really well from two with a good amount of blocked shots. And they don't give up a lot of threes or a high percentage from three. They also don't foul a ton, which is good for a team that plays a, a couple of big men in there. What they don't do well is get to the free throw line much. They're not a great shooting team either at the line or from three. They're only 30.5% on three-point shots this year. They don't really create turnovers or steals on the defensive side of the ball. Keep in mind, they do play at a solid, you know, to upper tempo, top 100 in the country in adjusted tempo on Ken Palm, which I think is a good thing for KU. You like more faster games when you have good athletes and good players like KU does, and they like to play a little bit faster too. As far as the personnel for Wichita State, uh, they basically play like three combo guards, one through three. Colby Rogers scores 17 a game, basically 42% from three. He's the guy who can really get going from the outside. He has taken over 80 three pointers in 12 games. So he's going to fire up a lot of threes in this game. Xavier Bell gets 14 and a half points per game. And Harlan Beverly is the point guard. He gets just under four assists per game, leading the team there. 10 points, five rebounds, good steal numbers. He's just an all around good point guard, 6'5. Handles the ball a lot for him. He's he's a, a good player overall, good defender too. They'll play some big and small. When they're playing big, it's going to be Kenny Poto at the four. He is a six foot ten, two hundred and forty three pounder who averages twelve points 
and eight rebounds per game. And when he's at the four, they'll be playing Quincy Ballard, who is six foot 11, 251 pounds at the five. Bruiser, who's getting seven and seven a game on 65% from the field and over two blocks per game. Then at times when Ballard goes to the bench, which he plays about 24 minutes per game, uh, the other center minutes go to Poto, who will then slide to the five. And then they have a group of like six foot six or six foot eight guys who will play either the uh, kind of a wing or, or a four position for them. Uh, for what it's worth, by having me a Cowa site, top individual defenders are number one, Harlan Beverly. Number two, Bijan Cortez, who's the backup point guard. And then Poto is in at number three. All right, let's get to our matchups of the game and players to watch with this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. First, we were brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting event should not be stressful. Game Time is fast and easy. You can find tickets to your favorite sports, music, comedy, theater, and any events that are going on near you. What's so cool about the Game Time interface is, A, it's easy to just find everything, but you get to see the seats and the seat view of what you're looking at. You can also switch to the map view where you can see in the arena or the stadium and see different sections where the cheapest is. Right now, you can get tickets for $56 to the KU Wichita State game on game time, and you can even get a discount if you use our promo code. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On to our matchups of the game. Then we'll finish up with our players to watch with this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. Don't forget you can uh, subscribe to the show and check out our bowl recap from the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, takeaways from the game afterwards, and uh, plenty of others that you can find on this ep or this uh, show with Locked on Jayhawks. Matchup number one. KU forcing turnovers. Uh, Wichita State doesn't turn it over much. They're in the top 100 in uh, avoiding turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. KU hasn't done a great job at this, uh, but it has shown more life lately in the Yale game. Kansas was able to force a ton of turnovers, and you saw the reward as part of that kind of big run they went on uh, to finish the game. They were really able to get some easy buckets off of it, and they were able to get a bunch of stops off of it. Um, so much so that the Yale game was KU's best turnover defense game of the season. And um, they also have the Indiana game, which was their fourth best. So their recent run of play, the Missouri game was more in the middle, has shown that they've done a much better job at uh, accomplishing. But in games with a 16% turnover rate or higher, which to be clear, like that's not even like that high of a turnover rate, 16%, like Kansas – is turning it over about 17 and a half percent. That's like 158th in the country. Uh, Wichita State is turning it over at 16.1 percent. That's 91st in the country. National average is 17.8 percent. So it's not even that you have to force them into a ton, but when they have games with 16 percent or higher turnover rate, so when they're basically even above average to good at it or too bad somewhere on that scale, they're one in four. In games where they have a 15% turnover rate or lower, they are 7-0. and So pretty much they're winning games when they are playing an elite level of not turning the ball over. Even when they're average or above average at turning the ball over, they're losing. So can you just make them even an average team in that regard? Number two is the battle of the boards. Wichita State is top 70 in the country in both offense and defensive rebound rate. They are uh, 67th offensively. They are 68th on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, KU, meanwhile, is top 80 in defensive rebounding rate. They're 78th right now, but they're only 260th in defensive or in uh, offensive rebound rate. So they're not really getting offensive rebounds, but they are getting defensive rebounds. So in theory, this is an edge for the Shockers and a team that plays a couple of traditional big men. But just like turnovers, KU has the personnel to be better at these things. And a team that um, is going to kind of challenge you here, does that – get Kansas to play up with them a little bit more in, in that specific area. You know, you, you look at um, playing in like the Indiana game, who that was a good rebounding team. You had kind of an average defensive rebounding game and 
Um, he had kind of an average offensive rebounding game, so it didn't really play up necessarily in like that one. But can it in this one? We will see. Maybe with the fresh legs, that kind of helps KU out. But again, this is something where if you can mitigate it, like don't let it be a takeover number for Wichita State. Don't let Wichita State have 15 offensive rebounds to where that's what's keeping them in the game because they're out hustling you and getting easy buckets off stickbacks. Number three is scoring inside. Wichita State gets 37 paint points per game. That puts them in the top 12% of college basketball. So they're scoring in the paint at one of the highest rates in the country. Defense side of the ball, though, KU is only giving up 26 paint points per game. That's in the top 8% of college basketball. So you have two strengths going at it there. Uh, Wichita State's also been elite at preventing, or, or I'm sorry, Kansas has also been uh, elite at preventing shots inside at all. It's, it's not just that they're doing a good job avoiding points in the paint. They're just not giving up shots inside. They're doing a good job of denying inside or, I guess, staying in front of guards to prevent easy buckets inside. Um, they're in the 92nd percentile as Kansas in preventing shots at the rim, according to CBB Analytics. Uh, the few attempts that they have given up have netted a 61% mark, which is a little more efficiency than you would like, but they haven't given up a ton of even tries on the inside. Wichita State has done it more through kind of volume than anything else, though. They're not a super efficient team at the rim, just 56.7% at the rim this season. That is actually in the bottom fifth of the entire country of D1 basketball. But they're also in the 98th percentile in amount of shots at the rim, so it comes in heavy volume. So basically, point being, Wichita State gets a lot of their points in the paint because they take a lot of shots in the paint, but they haven't been ultra-efficient at it. KU does a good job typically of preventing teams from even getting those shots in the paint. Who will win out on that battle? But the battle isn't just on KU's defensive side in the paint. It's the other side because Kansas gets 38 points in the paint per game. That puts them in the top 10% of all of college basketball. On the defensive side, Wichita State gives up just 30.4 points in the paint per game, which is closer to national average. KU is shooting 68.7% at the rim. They have been unbelievable shooting at the rim so far this season. And they're taking shots at the rim at a 95th percentile rate, which means they're taking it at one of the five highest percentages in college basketball. Wichita State's defense is giving up just 54% at the rim, though. They have been rugged inside and tough to score on at the rim. That's really good. However, they are giving up 24 field goal attempts at the rim per game, which ranks in the top 3% for the most shots allowed at the rim per game. So again, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. I'm, I'm trying not to make this number salad, but uh, summarizing that, Wichita State has done a good job at preventing high efficiency at the rim, but they have given up a lot of shots at the rim. And for a Kansas team that wants to pound it inside to Hunter Dickinson and wants to have their guards drive to the rim, you're going to have an opportunity in this game. So does the percentage look more like KU's, which is pristine shooting at the rim, or does it look more like Wichita State's defense, which is pretty good defensively at the rim? As far as our player matchup, we're going Kevin McCuller versus Colby Rogers. Kevin coming off the 34-point outing, looking like an All-American National Player of the Year candidate. Obviously a great defender as well. He plays uh, mostly the three for KU, but you'll see him slide around. Colby Rogers plays mostly the three for Wichita State. Again, it's, it's basically three combo guards, so kind of interchangeable with the one, two, and three. He can at times play the two. He can at times bring the ball up, but uh, I'll be interested to see if that is the matchup. And either way, that's that's kind of the, the go-to scoring option on the perimeter for both teams. That makes a very interesting matchup. Let's get to our players to watch, Hawks to soar that we think can have big games or maybe need to for KU on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. First, we are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 back if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads player props, over-unders, and more. You can get in on futures, teams win the Super Bowl, teams make the Final Four, win the national title in college football or college basketball. Uh, so visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Players to watch, Hawks to soar in this one for KU. I want to start with Nick Timberlake. He's coming off a big game, 13 points tied his uh, Kansas career high. Xavier Bell, who is the... Uh, I guess mostly the two guard again, they're kind of interchangeable for Wichita State one through three, uh, but he's mostly the two guard. Good score, 14.7 points per game. Um, he has been their 
one of their two lowest rated defenders on Evan Miyakawa's website. In fact, he is the lowest. For what it's worth, Colby Rogers, who is their three slash backup two, he's been their second worst, which means this isn't just Nick Timberlake. This is Kevin McCuller too. Timberlake and McCuller, in theory, when Omarco Jackson or Johnny Furphy are out there, should be able to have advantageous matchups and should be able to free themselves open and should be able to get some open shots and and take advantage in this game. And for Timberlake, what does it look like with Furphy back? I don't know, but this is a matchup that he should be able to take advantage of. Um, we'll see how being at the T-Mobile Center affects you know some of the shooting stuff. But uh, also Hunter Dickinson should put up big numbers because it'll be more of a traditional big man matchup. And as we profile, Wichita State will give up some shots at the rim. Now, a lot of the shots at the rim, it might not all be post-ups. It might be because they're playing two bigs. Maybe guards are driving on the big man or something like that. So uh, interesting to watch there all the way around. We'll be back for a recap of KU Wichita State later in the week. This has been Locked on Jayhawks. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to the show.